is Aviva Schwartz. I'm the Director of Content and Education for NATF, the North American Thrombosis Forum. And I'm here today with Dr. Sam Goldhaber, NATF's president. And we are going to talk today about the new COVID vaccine. Patients have had a lot of questions about this. So we'd love to hear your expert opinion. The first question that I want to address is vaccine safety. We've heard some people have mistrust because this was a rushed process compared to other vaccines. So what are your thoughts on that? Can patients be assured that this is a safe vaccine? Well, Aviva, first of all, uh, thank you for letting me have this opportunity to talk to our NATF audience. Uh, this vaccine is one of the great triumphs of modern medical science. And uh, the vaccine, in terms of its efficacy and safety, is almost unprecedented. I do think that uh, it's not just one vaccine. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine uh, and the Moderna vaccine have similar mechanisms and similar results with about 95% efficacy. Now, to be approved by the FDA, you need uh, their standard is to have 50% efficacy. And I think we all know stories with the flu vaccines of many, including ourselves perhaps, getting the flu vaccine and then still coming down with the flu. Uh, but 95% uh, is really off the charts. And from what we understand uh, from the reams of data that have been made public, both the Pfizer trials and the Moderna trials uh, have been done rigorously. Billions of dollars have been poured in uh, in order to have the resources to do the trials uh, quickly but carefully. So I think that we couldn't anticipate a sore arm, but uh, in terms of serious complications, uh, very few reports. Wonderful. So there have also been reports in the media about the fact that until we achieve this herd immunity, the vaccine will protect an individual from displaying symptoms of COVID-19, but that they can still pass the infection to other people or that somebody can have the infection and just be asymptomatic. So can you talk a little bit about the level of protection that the vaccine affords us in spite of this until we get to that level of herd immunity? The vaccine will protect almost everyone who gets vaccinated. And if someone passes on the virus, that case of COVID should be much milder than currently. Uh, but I do think uh, it will be important to continue uh, our masking and our hand washing and our social distancing uh, for quite some time. Specifically to patients who have had a history of blood clots or who have a genetic clotting disorder, we've had a couple questions from patients just wondering about whether or not the vaccine would protect against COVID-associated thrombosis or if there are any side effects that people who have hereditary clotting disorders should know about. If you can comment on that, that would be helpful. Sure. Well, the rate of pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis due to COVID should diminish to close to zero because it's the virus itself that causes inflammation or that goes directly to the heart that causes the ensuing blood clot. And so if you don't get sick with COVID, you're not going to get a blood clot due to COVID. So pulmonary embolism and DVT should become vanishingly rare if we have a successful vaccination campaign. Okay, that's wonderful to know. And then are there any side effects that people should be on the lookout for beyond what you mentioned? Yeah, I think that we'll get a better sense of side effects when we go from tens of thousands in the trial to millions who are getting vaccinated. So I think we need to stay alert. But as far as I know, from what's been released so far, sore arm, fatigue the last couple of days, the tricky thing is sometimes you can develop for a couple of days sniffles and some symptoms that are similar to COVID itself, even though this is not a live vaccine. And so it will be interesting to see how we differentiate between uh, COVID, the illness, and um, the aftermath of the COVID vaccine. 
I know that at Brigham and Women's Hospital, uh, we've already put in place policies where if you get symptoms shortly after the vaccine that seem like COVID, you will be COVID tested, but not restricted from the workplace. Okay. And should patients who have had COVID-19 infection be getting this vaccine as well? I, th I think they should uh, because we don't really know uh, how much immunity uh, you get from having had COVID itself. I, I do speculate that the degree of immunity varies widely. Uh, if you get a severe case of COVID and survive, you probably have a lot more immunity than someone who is nearly or completely asymptomatic and gets COVID. So yes, I do think uh, those who've had COVID should be vaccinated. There has been some concern about this COVID long hauler syndrome. So yes. do you think that the vaccine will do anything in terms of preventing the onset of those symptoms? Yeah, well, COVID long hauler syndrome or post-COVID syndrome, uh, that's a real problem. I, um, I have patients with this and uh, at the moment, there's no good treatment for it. Mm -hmm. So the vaccine will help because the vaccine will prevent COVID. And if you don't get COVID, you won't get post-COVID syndrome or long hauler syndrome. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and for answering these patient thank you, questions. Aviva. Very grateful for your time and happy holidays. Same to you.